Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Let's go ahead and get this uh, this video started. And we're going to be diving into some of the more information about the seven-day fruit and salad challenge. And we're going to actually get into the ebook that you all received with, uh, with the purchase or the signing up of this challenge. So come on in. Come on in. I'm going to give you guys a second to roll through. And uh, if you have your ebooks and you have another device, feel free to just pull your ebooks up on a different device. That way we can actually just um, kind of just keep up with where we're at as we move through this live uh, conversation about uh, high blood pressure, the seven day fruit and salad challenge, and everything that comes in between. So as you guys come in the group, uh, let me know where you're from. That way, um, <clears throat> that way I can know where a lot of you guys are, are located. I'm based down here in South Florida in the Hollywood Daniel Beach area. And, um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool right now. It's summertime, so it's a little rainy, but other than that, you know, <laughs> the weather's pretty fair. So, uh, guys, come on in, come on in. So, um, before we get started, actually, um, for those of us that are interested in um, still joining the 7 Day Fruit and Salad Challenge, you should see a link. I believe uh, it's right here. It should say one link or the feature link right there. That link is going to take you directly to the 7 Day Fruit and Salad Challenge. That way, you can sign up, get your ebook and understand exactly where we're at through this process each and every day as we move forward through the challenge. Enrollment is open right now. Uh, enrollment closes on July 9th, and the Fruit and Salad Challenge starts on July 10th. It's going to be a seven-day Fruit and Salad Challenge, and today we're going to be continuing to break down the information. That way we can just understand how this challenge works um, and understand the critical information we need to know when it comes down to managing our blood pressure and things like that. So again, if you have your ebooks and you have a computer or another device, just simply pull it up. That way um, you can kind of follow along as I go through and break down some of these things. And you can kind of just start to digest the information that's inside of these e this ebook. That way as you um, move forward throughout the challenge, you have something to look back at, you have something to reference, and you know you can just refresh the information in your mind. That way as you start to make lifestyle changes to better control your blood pressure, you have a resource or a guide to actually look into and go from there. So um, with that being said, I think uh, we should go ahead and get started with the information. Um, so we talked about, well, yesterday we talked about how the challenge actually works. We talked about the seven days, what they look like, um, the rules of the challenge. Um, if you need to um, go back and check on the rules of the challenge, you can either go to the um, last live video that I have posted. It's pinned up inside of the group. Or you can just refer to your ebook and it has everything, the same exact thing laid out there. We've talked about that um, the last time I was live, went over all the rules and what, um, what you need to follow throughout the um, seven day fruit and salad challenge. So if you need to check that out, feel free to double back at the last video or um, just simply reference your ebook. You'll see it all inside there. So today we're gonna get started talking about the minerals that are important for blood pressure. And we're gonna go through uh, we're gonna go through a, a, a couple of them. That way, uh, you guys can start putting the pieces to the puzzle together. And once we get into the actual challenge, you have some um, you basically have some understanding of why these minerals are important, where you can find them, and just start focusing now on just being um, including more into your diet as you continue to move forward. So um, when I created the ebook, I started out with potassium as the first mineral. And then those of us that have been following me for a while, I've had the potassium and sodium um, conversation many, many times because for a lot of people, this potassium issue is the majority of the problem. For, like, for most people, it's usually a potassium issue. And especially, especially for those of us that are um, like using on di just one diuretic or just seemingly just got high blood pressure out of nowhere, it's, it's a lot of times a potassium deficiency that's occurring. So I like to start with potassium because this is one of the easiest fixes for people dealing with blood pressure issues. Nine times out of 10, like when you correct the potassium issue that you're dealing with, you usually fix the blood pressure problem for a lot of people. Because one thing that we hear often when you go to the doctor and you get diagnosed with high blood pressure, they always talk about reducing your sodium and you know eat less salt and things like that. But one of the main things that we have to understand is the potassium and sodium uh, balance that occurs in the body and when you understand this, 
you'll understand that it's not necessarily all about the sodium, even though that's a very, very important part. But if you add more potassium rich foods to your diet, the potassium is a natural diuretic and it's going to just balance out the sodium by itself naturally, even though reducing the sodium is very important. But adding more potassium to your body is going to allow for a number of things to change, especially when it comes down to your blood pressure. So I'm going to uh, take, the sec take a second and read off what I have inside of the ebook. That way, um, <clears throat> that way you guys can see the, the, the information that's there. And I'll just go over it verbally for you guys. So potassium as an essential mineral plays a significant role in the management of high blood pressure. It is involved in various physiological processes that contribute to cardiovascular health. Let's, let's explore the role of potassium in managing high blood pressure in more detail. So now it goes right into the details of the role that potassium plays. And one thing that I'm very, very big on, the more that you understand like how things work in the body, the more you're gonna actually start to uh, apply these changes to start moving yourself forward in the right direction. Because when you're able to connect more dots in your mind, now you're able to actually do better because you know better. And when you, when you start knowing better, you're doing better, you start to get better. So it's a combination of things that need to actually happen. And that's why having a, a, a coach or a guide through this process is going to help you get to the end, end goal a lot faster. Because if you don't know things and you're just shooting your shot in the dark, most likely you're going to come up short. So we're going to talk about the uh, various roles that potassium plays in the body. And again, I'm reading through the high blood pressure. Um, I'm reading through the seven day fruit and salad challenge ebook. If you have your ebook, go ahead. You could go ahead and pull it up and we're just going to go right through some of these things that's inside of here. So number one is the sodium potassium balance. Sodium commonly consumed as salt, which is sodium chloride. Salt and, salt and sodium is pretty much two different things. Salt is uh, sodium chloride, which is a bonded chemical, and sodium is sodium itself. So potassium, uh, I'm sorry, sodium and potassium balance. Sodium commonly consumed as salt, which is sodium chloride, is a mineral that can, that can contribute to high blood pressure. We all know that. Excessive sodium intake can lead to fluid retention, incre increased blood volume, and elevated blood pressure levels. For individuals with hypertension, reducing sodium intake often proves beneficial. We all know that if you reduce your sodium, boom, you can help with your blood pressure. But now let's talk about, you know, the back end of it when it comes down to the sodium potassium balance. Maintaining the balance between sodium and potassium is critical for optimum cardiovascular health. However, modern, diet, modern diets tend to be high in sodium and low in potassium, creating an imbalance that contributes to hypertension. To, to effectively manage blood pressure, it is recommended to increase potassium. It's, it's, it's recommended to increase potassium intake while reducing your, reducing your sodium consumption. So, when you talk about the modern diet, this is just your standard American diet, what every what what the majority of people are consuming on a daily basis: um, canned food, processed foods, uh, fast foods. Um, you know, just just the, the, the way we're pairing foods and things, and things like that. The standard American diet is naturally higher in sodium and lower in, pat, in potassium. So if you're, if you're just eating, just, just eating, I would say, I want to say mindfully, if you're just eating just normal, regularly, however you go about your day, most likely you're, you're consuming a standard American diet and it's already puts you in a default situation because it's already lower in potassium and higher in sodium. So eventually as this process goes on, a couple years, five years, 10 years, 20 years of doing the same thing, uh, depending on your genetics and depending on your body, eventually you're going to be, you're going to develop some type of blood pressure issue for most people, not all, but for most people, you're going to develop some type of blood pressure issue because of the lack of potassium that's in the, in the system and the overconsumption of the, of the standard, standard American diet, it increases your sodium levels and it causes a domino effect of things to actually occur. So now, once you start dealing with the blood pressure issue, it's very, very important that you start making the necessary adjustments. And this is where the seven day plant-based, um, the seven day um, fruit and salad challenge comes into play at because now you have to start plugging in those pieces, that, those potassium pieces that may be missing from your diet to help you bring balance to that sodium potassium um, levels within the body because what potassium does is potassium is a natural diuretic 
And it, what this means is that it excretes the excessive amount of sodium in the bloodstream and it keeps those levels balanced. Potassium and sodium works together when it comes to managing your blood pressure. If the sodium levels are high, this is going to cause your blood pressure to be higher because of the water retention and the stress that it puts on the cardiovascular system. So now it's like, okay, reduce your sodium intake by eliminating the processed foods, the fast foods, and the excess of, sugar, the excess of salt intake. You bring your sodium levels down, and now you start eating more whole foods and getting more potassium. This is going to, br this is going to balance you out, and this is going to bring your blood pressure back to normal levels. So it's very, very important to understand that this can potentially be your issue when dealing with blood pressure challenges. So as if you know that you're someone that, that doesn't really eat mindfully, you kind of just, you maybe eat fast food here and there, and then... Um, you know, you eat a lot of things that come out of boxes like um, packaged cereals or packaged, whatever type of canned or packaged foods. A lot of these foods are laced with salts, oils, and sugars that are very, very damaging when it comes down to um, your, your overall health and your blood pressure. So you have to understand that when you're dealing with this type of issue, you have to remove the cause first and then start, you know, once you remove the cause, then you can start working towards correcting the issue. So reducing your sodium intake and increasing your potassium intake is going to bring some balance to this sodium-potassium pathway to help you get better control of your blood pressure. Uh, so I'm going to keep reading through. <clears throat> Number two, counteracting sodium effects. Potassium helps counterbalance the effects of sodium in the body. While sodium promotes fluid retention and raises blood pressure, potassium works to counteract these effects. By increasing potassium levels, you can mitigate the, neg the negative impact of sodium on blood pressure regulations. To maintain a healthy sodium-potassium balance, it is advised to limit sodium intake by reducing the consumption of processed and packaged foods, which tend to be high in sodium. Simultaneously, incorporating potassium-rich foods into your diet, such as fruits, vegetables, legumes, and nuts, can effectively support healthy blood pressure levels. By understanding and managing the delicate relationship between sodium and potassium, you can take proactive steps towards maintaining a healthier blood pressure and overall well-being. Same basic things that we just went over. It's really, really basic. This is one of the first steps moving forward. If you don't know what your blood pressure issues, where they came from, this is your starting point. This is going to help you understand your triggers and guide you in the right direction because you don't want to just shoot in the dark. First thing someone hears, oh, my blood pressure high, we get the, the information like, okay, exercise, reduce your sodium, and then we kind of just hear the eat better narrative. But you have to understand what eating better looks like. The better you understand what it looks like and the foods you need to incorporate and um, just how to do these things, now you have more tools that are going to help you better manage this problem and get to the bottom of it. But if you're just shooting your shot in the dark, some things might work, some things may not work. You know, you, you never know what's going on. So it's really, really important to follow a pathway that's going to guide you along this journey to help you better understand exactly what's taking place. And as we continue to read through this ebook, you're going to see the things that are connecting that's going to help you understand where you're at, what you're experiencing, and how it's affecting you and displaying itself in your blood pressure. And when you're able to better connect those dots, now you're better able to understand your, your personal situation and continue to try to do better to get over the problem. So number two, um, vasodilation. Potassium aids in relaxing the walls of blood vessels, promoting vasodilation. This dilation helps to lower blood pressure by reducing resistance to blood flow and improving circulation. Potassium is a mineral that softens the blood vessels. So when you consume foods that are high in potassium, they, the nutrients go into the cells and it allows for the blood vessels to soften up. So if you're someone that's dealing with, um, let's say you're dealing with um, arterial sclerosis and hardening of the blood vessels, increasing your potassium levels is going to help soften those blood vessels up. Because when the blood vessels are stiff, you can liken that to like... Um, a water hose or a fire a fire hydrant hose. Like you ever seen the fire the firefighter hook up the hose to the um the, the, the hydrant, the little red main, and then they turn it on and then the blood and then the, the hose just stretches out real hard and real tight. That's what your blood vessels are like when you have high blood pressure. But when you start consuming more potassium rich foods and increase your potassium levels, that stiffness in your in your arteries and your blood vessels, they softens up and become more relaxed. And when they're more relaxed, 
the blood can actually flow through a lot smoother and this takes the pressure off the heart brings the heart rate down and the blood pressure relaxes it's not shooting and flying all through the blood vessels tearing up your kidneys tearing up your arteries and you know causing all type of damage in the eyes and all the other capillaries throughout the body so understanding that you know potassium is a mineral that's going to help with vasodilation and softening softening up the arteries it's going to widen those arteries up relax them and allow for them the blood to flow through smoothly and on the opposite end sodium it Sodium causes the blood vessels to stiffen and to harden. So we have to understand that these things work in opposition. So the, the potassium is softening things up and, and, and dilating the blood vessels. And the excess amount of sodium is doing the exact opposite. So that's why it's very, very important to also reduce or eliminate the, the excessive amount of sodium that you're consuming, especially during this time, so you can better get control of the problem and start to see it display itself in your blood pressure readings. <clears throat> Next. Uh, number three, sodium excretion. Potassium stimulates the kidneys to, ex to excrete excess sodium through the urine. By increasing potassium levels, you can support the elimination of sodium, thereby reducing fluid retention and blood pressure. And that's why I was saying that potassium is a natural diuretic. If you're someone that's taking hydrochlorothiazide and other type of diuretic loops and pills and things like that, the potassium works the same exact way. It does the same thing. Now, this doesn't mean that you just stop taking your um, blood pressure pills and just take a lot of potassium and, and consume eat, eat a lot of foods and potassium. It's a little bit different of a process because you have to start to wean yourself off of it by building your body up. But potassium works as a natural diuretic. The excessive amount of sodium that you may have consumed during a certain time period it flushes it out of the body through the urine, through the natural measures, and brings balance back to the sodium-potassium um, pathway. So understanding that, okay, man, I got to reduce my sodium intake. If I might eat a lot of snack foods while I'm on the go, maybe some chips and, um, you know, salty snacks or things like that, you got to learn if, that's, if your blood pressure is an issue, you got to get away from those things and allow for your body to get back in balance because if you're still incorporating those things into your diet, and you're just um, not being mindful about those things, your blood pressure is going to continue to yo-yo. And then eventually, it's going to become a bigger problem and manifest into something else that's going to require more drugs, more attention, and it's going to be a little more difficult to actually get off of because you're going to have to make bigger, large-scale changes. And understanding that just because you may be on multiple medications for different issues and things like that, this doesn't mean that you know, you can't get to the bottom of this problem. It may take a little bit more time and a little more effort, but when you start making a change, Kelly, come get this door for me. Kelly, come get this door. Huh? Come get the door for me. Uh, when you start making some of these changes, you're gonna start to see your body progress and move in the right direction to help you overcome these type of issues. So um, just don't be discouraged if you're taking multiple medications and you have these other issues going on. Because one thing about lifestyle changes, <laughs> you all right? Yeah, all right, get out of the camera, man. <laughs> I got my, my baby girl right here. So, But one thing about these lifestyle changes is that as you continue to apply them, your body is going to respond in the right direction. And it's going to automatically move in a health promoting direction because every cell in your body wants to live. It wants to be healthy, but you have to get in alignment to allow them to do so. So the next one for potassium is arterial health. Adequate potassium intake has been associated with improved arterial health. It may help prevent the thickening and hardening of arterial walls, which can contribute to high blood pressure. And I went over those things with you guys as I, as I was saying. To effectively manage high blood pressure, it is recommended to consume potassium-rich foods such as bananas, avocados, oranges, spinach, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, and other fruits and vegetables. However, it's important to note that potassium intake should be balanced and monitored. And this is specifically for people that are dealing with kidney issues that was specifically for people dealing with kidney issues, mainly because if you have severe kidney issues, you may have this potassium problem that's going on. And too much potassium in the, in the bloodstream can cause some serious issues. So if you're someone dealing with high blood pressure that's rooted in your kidney, kidney issues, depending on the stage that you're in with this problem, you have to be very, very mindful about this, this approach because too much potassium 
with kidney issues can cause some cause some heart issues basically so if you're dealing with kidney issues you want to be and you're dealing with kidney and potassium issues which you would not with nine times out of ten you would know this because your doctor has already specified this to you but if you're dealing with these severe kidney issues this is a pathway that you want to avoid mainly because you don't want to your, your kidneys are, are not working on a high enough level to eliminate any excess amount of potassium that may be in the system and this can cause you some blowback that you really don't want to deal with so if you have those kidney issues you really need to be mindful of this pathway and there are other pathways that you would need to take to help you get to the root cause of this problem and we'll continue to move through this as we go through um the later parts of this actual um challenge that we have so um, I listed a couple of foods that was here high in potassium, but what, what I'm gonna, before, I'm gonna, before I get back into those foods, I'm going to talk about some of the side effects that you will experience when dealing with, um, with um, low potassium levels. And guys, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them inside of the chat. If you haven't gotten your um, seven-day fruit and salad challenge ebook or signed up for it, I got a featured link, I believe, right here. Or right here on that side, you can just simply click that link and join the challenge so you can get the ebook with all the information that we're going over and be a part of this actual challenge that begins on uh, July 10th. So um, next, we're going to talk about the various symptoms and side effects of, of low potassium. So the first one is usually muscle weakness. Um, potassium plays a critical role in muscle functions, including contraction and relaxing. Remember, we talked about the vasodilation of the blood vessels. Same thing inside of the muscles. It, it plays a role in contraction and the relaxation of the muscles. So muscle weakness is a sign of low potassium. When potassium levels are low, it can cause muscle weakness, fatigue, and cramping. Number two is going to be an irregular heartbeat. Potassium is essential for maintaining a normal heart rhythm. Low potassium levels can disrupt the electrical pulses that regulate the heart, leading to irregular heartbeats and, and palpitations. So if you're someone that, that just, you have high blood pressure and you may experience a heart palpitations or an irregular heartbeat here and there sometime, just know that this can, this can be due to your low, to low potassium levels. Now there are other things that can contribute to this as well, as well but just know that this low potassium can play a, a similar role in this type of problem. So in this seven day uh, fruit and salad challenge, we kind of break down of some of these uh, side effects. That way you can kind of con continue to connect the dots. Like, well, I've, I've, I've I, oh, excuse me. Mm. Excuse me, sorry. I've experienced this before, but I haven't felt this, or I felt this and felt that, or, well, no, I haven't felt any of these. This kind of helps you connect the dots. That way you can kind of understand what you may be experiencing and just know that, okay, let me just kind of move forward in this right direction because I've experienced this. I've encountered this and let me start eating better to help get to the, about the root cause of this problem. So muscle weakness is one. Irregular heartbeats are two. Number three <clears throat> is going to be fatigue and overall weakness. Inadequate potassium can contribute to overall fatigue and weakness impacting every impacting energy levels and physical stamina. So if you're someone that's always exhausted, you can get a good night rest and wake up and just feel like you just you didn't get any sleep. If you're someone that's, that's always drained, don't have the energy to do just basic things throughout the day, this can be a big sign of low potassium levels and changing your um, changing some of the what well, uh, adding more foods that are high in potassium, high in fiber in your diet is going to help you get over some of these humps. Now, it, now again, this that's no super food that you could just eat and just feel better. This is a process, a process of eating more whole foods, just adding them to your diet and letting your body respond naturally. The fiber, the water, the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes, all those things will come together and ultimately take the form that they need to and provide your body with the nutrients and the energy to actually start getting better and moving in the right direction. So fatigue and weakness is a big part of this process. And if you're feeling this, this can be, contrib this can be contributed to uh, low potassium levels. Uh, number four is going to be constipation. Low potassium levels may result in decreased intestinal motility, uh, leading to uh, constipation and digestive discomfort. Um, usually if you're not getting enough potassium, you're not getting enough fiber anyways. And you don't have enough fiber in your diet, Nothing's moving around out of your out of your colon and going to where it needs to be. Well, we're getting out of your system. It's moving a lot slower, and then you know it just things just get backed up. And uh, that brings me to another question that I had earlier today. Was um, it wasn't even a question. It was a statement. Um, a, a young lady made a statement that um, she can't do the seven day uh, fruit and salad challenge because every time she eats fruits and vegetables, she just get bad gas and gets constipated. 
And that is something that is um, probably going to happen to a few people. You're going to get some gas. You're going to get constipated because things are moving around. It's as simple as that. You're not necessarily used to eating your fruits and your vegetables, and especially eating a, a higher amount of fiber throughout, throughout the day. So now what happens is all that bad stuff that's in there and the good stuff you're eating, they're going to come into contact with each other at some point. That good guy, that good potassium and magnesium, that good stuff is going to come into your body, come down this alimentary canal, go through the stomach, hit the digest, hit the intestines, and then it's going to hit all that bad buildup of all the poor food and dietary choices that's all built and gunked up in there, and it's going to come in there, and it's going to start scrubbing and pulling and pushing things out. And when things start pushing out, you might get some diarrhea, you might get some gas, you might find some constipation here and there. You're going to be stimulated in ways that you're not normally stimulated. And the thing about this is that you should not run from it. Because if you find yourself being constipated during this time period, or you find yourself being um, uh, having digestive discomfort, this typically means that your body is just having, is you just, your, your body is, is reacting to the, the stimulating foods that you're pushing that you're putting in the system and the fiber and the water and the nutrients and everything is pushing out the buildup that's inside of the colon and over the course of 24 hours or so it's going to continue to push things out so if you have multiple bowel movements throughout the day don't run from it be prepared for it embrace it because just know that that stuff that's in there that bowel movement that you had those multiple tricks get out of there Got that box. <laughs> my cat's inside of uh, <laughs> playing with my plants. But um, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have multiple bowel movements throughout the day. If that happens, just embrace it and know that this is part of the process of me making these dietary changes. Out with the old, in with the new. You're going to see and feel some of this discomfort. The main thing that you want to do, if you find yourself being constipated, don't reach for a laxative. Don't reach for any type of stimulation or anything like that. Get some hydration. Um, move your body. Create. Get some exercise. Like walk around a little bit. Do create some movement because all these naturally stimulate, you know, um, st stimulate your digestive system and pushes things out. When you reach for a laxative or any type of the over over the counter uh, stimulant to help with uh, constipation, you're only setting yourself up for failure. And I'm gonna explain this for you so you can understand it uh, a little bit. When you do this. You, you're basically, imagine this, you go to work, you're tired, and you're just not up for it, you're sitting at your desk, and your boss comes to you, and he just grabs you by the shoulder and shakes you, come on, get up, get to work, do what you need to do. You're probably going to get up and like, oh man, golly, he on my back, I'm going to do what I need to do, but you're still going to be tired, you're still going to be exhausted, and you're not going to feel any better, even though you were just forced to do what you need to do. It's the same thing when it comes down to your digestive system and your colon and constipation. When you go to the, to the, to the store, you get some over-the-counter meds, and you take it, all you're doing is going inside of your colon, and you're shaking it up, and you're forcing it to do something, even though it's tired, exhausted, and it don't want to do it. It's constipated for, for a reason. It doesn't have the vital energies to actually push out these things on its own. And you taking a supplement to force it to do that doesn't fix the problem. So we have to understand that these over-the-counter medications, yeah, they're made to do a certain job, but this job that your body has to react to isn't in your best interest because when you take a tired worker and you keep whipping him and trying to make him work and do things, eventually he's going to break and he's not going to be able to do the things that he needs to do. And now comes a bigger problem. Same thing in your digestive system. You can't force your digestive system to do things when it doesn't have the energy and the vital power to do so. The only thing that you can do is give it a break give it the things that it needs to actually function properly and simply get out of the way and allow this to happen. So we have to get out of the habit of overstimulating our bodies in these type of ways for some temporary satisfaction. One thing that I learned through the many courses and schools of, of health that I went through is that when it comes down to your bowel movement, you have to earn a bowel movement through the dietary choices that you make. So if you're dealing with constipation and it's um, related to your dietary choices, 
You have to make the right dietary choices to allow for this to happen naturally without overstimulating the body. Now, what I do want to talk about, again, before I branch off the constipation issue, is that some of the medications that you're on can be contributing to this problem as well. So this is why it's important to also understand that you want to make sure you stay hydrated and work your way off of these pills because if these pills are causing you to be constipated, you have to think about the long-term side effects of constipation. If you're going to the bathroom once a week, twice a week, and things like that, understand that whatever you're eating is just sitting in there and it's fermenting and everything is happening. The bacteria is breaking it down, it's transforming and turning into all types of different things. And if it's a poor, a poor choice of food that's just rotting away inside of your digestive system, this causes a toxic buildup inside of the body. And eventually this toxic buildup is going to express itself in the form of disease. It could show up in the form of, uh, of GERD. It could show up in the form of, um, of eventually diabetes, high blood pressure. It's, it's going to show up some way or another. Might not be now, but it's definitely going to show up sooner or later. And this turns into a bigger problem. So when you allow for this uh, manifestation of disease to occur based off of just poor dietary choices, poor lifestyle choices, and continually just relying on the pharmaceutical medications, this is only going to lead you down a path of destruction. And that's why it's important to get better control of your diet, improve your lifestyle, work your way off the pharmaceutical medication as far as you can, and that way you can uh, eliminate the, uh, the majority of the problems that are going on. Because most people start off with one pill, end up on two pills. Before you know it, five, six years pass, they got five pills and they still haven't gotten to the root cause of the problem. It's just getting worse and worse. So understanding that lifestyle changes is going to be the way to help you get through it. So back to the side effects of low potassium. Uh, any questions, feel free to drop them in. I'm going to go back over any questions in a few. But back to the side effects, uh, number five is going to be num numbness and tingling. And again, I'm reading from the uh, seven-day fruit and salad um, ebook that we have. If you do have it and you uh, got a computer or a tablet somewhere, you can simply pull it up. And I'm going through the potassium sex se uh, se section. <laughs> number five, numbness and tingling. Potassium is involved in severe sig is, is involved in nerve signaling, signaling and maintaining proper nerve function. Uh, low potassium levels can cause numbness, tingling, sensations, or feelings of pins and needles in the extremities. So um, numbness in your fingers, numbness in your toes, you know, those are all directly related to your nerves and things like that. So low potassium levels, this is a sign of it as well. So understanding that if you're dealing with some of these things, just know where it's coming from. And this challenge is designed to help you connect the dots and have a resource and a tool to just dial back into, be able to review it and be like, okay, I'm, I'm understanding these things. When I feel this, I know that I just I need to make some adjustments in these type of in these particular areas. Number six, muscle cramps. Potassium deficiency can increase the likelihood of muscle cramps, particularly in the legs and the feet. In the feet. Uh, number seven, increased blood pressure. Potassium helps regulate blood pressure levels. Insufficient potassium intake can contribute to high blood pressure. The simplest that. Low potassium usually means high blood pressure for 95 percent of the people. The simplest that. Um, it's important to note that symptoms and uh, severity of low potassium can vary depending on the extent of the deficiency. So some people can get some of these symptoms and some people might not even experience any of these things. But it's important that you don't just sit down and allow for this problem to manifest. If you know your blood pressure is high and maybe some of us have even taken, um, got our blood work done and saw that our potassium was low. A doctor say, hey, here's some potassium supplement pills and we just decided to take the pills. Understanding that, you know, there's other pathways you can do without taking just a pill to fix the problem because the pills are not going to help you in the long run when it comes down to solving the, the root cause of the issue. Getting more potassium-rich foods is going to be the best, the best pathway to get through this problem. So I, right now I'm going to go through the list of potassium-rich foods that I got listed here. That way you guys can have some idea of what foods are high in potassium and be able to just start incorporating them into your diet um, the best way you can. Me personally, my suggestion is just eat the whole food as it is. Just uh, if you want, you want these different items, just get those foods, add them in just like that. So here's a list of potassium rich foods categorized, categorized into fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Uh, again, one time, one thing again, uh, I, I strategize this in um, fruits and salads mainly because 
I prefer that you guys consume these foods in their raw form. Uh, when you eat these foods in a raw form, they have the highest amount of fiber. I mean, they have the highest amount of vitamins and minerals. And, and this is going to allow your body to optimally just utilize everything that's there. When these things are broken down, cooked, or in smoothies and in other different ways, the mineral levels start to diminish because once you heat anything up, it starts to break it down. But when you consume it raw, everything is going to be at its peak. And that's going to be the best value when it comes down to just getting your bang for your buck going through this process. So fruit, fruits that are high in potassium, bananas, avocados, oranges, kiwis, pomegranates, apricots, uh, cantaloupe, honeydews, uh, mangoes, papaya. That's, those are one of my top 10 because those are the ones that typically are the, are the highest. Um, <clears throat> There are dozens more that are out there, dates and everything else that are there. But these are the ones that are just, that are pretty much, you can find them anywhere, any time of the year. And they're, they're, they're usually available in the stores. I'm not going to give you a list of all these different crazy different fruits that you might not find in your area. I gave you a straightforward list that you can usually find anywhere at any grocery store. And they're going to be able to do the job just as efficiently as you need them to. So it's not any crazy thing that you got to go search and find and cook up and do these things. These are all basic grocery store items that you'll be able to find. Uh, next one, vegetables high in potassium, spinach, sweet potatoes, squash, tomatoes, uh, potatoes, Brussels sprouts, kale, butternut squash, um, beets, and Swiss chard. Those are my top 10 out of there. All of them are high in, um, in uh, potassium. Swiss chard is the one that typically is the, the highest, one of the best ones that I love to consume. I got tons of it sitting inside of my refrigerator now. And these vegetables are all high in potassium. And there's a number of things that you can do with them when it comes down to just consuming more of it. Now, albeit some of these need to be cooked and prepared, Whenever you um, whenever you're trying to get more, whenever you're consuming them, but for the sake of this challenge, I want you guys to focus on the greens that are going to give you your potassium. So typically, when I'm preparing my salads, spinach, um, Swiss chard, uh, arugula, and kale are the, the greens that I blend in together to give me like this power packed, um, this power packed lettuce uh, blend that I like. It's high in potassium, high in magnesium, fiber, water, everything is all inside of this, this blend. And this is going to give you this power pack punch of all these different vitamins and minerals, not including the other toppings that you may want to put on top of your salad. And one of these salads per day is going to help get things moving through your digestive system, give you the vitamins and minerals that you need to function at an optimum level, and it's going to keep you moving in the right direction. So those are a list of those, um, those are fruits and vegetables. And now we got the nuts and seeds that are high in potassium. Um, the first one I have on here is pistachios, almonds, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, and cashews. Now, usually the, pistach the pistachios, the pistachios are usually roasted. And there's, I think it's almost impossible to find pistachios that are not roasted. I think they have to be roasted in order for that shell to actually crack for you to get inside of it. Um, me personally, I eat a ton of pistachios. I love pistachios. It's like my guilty pleasure. Um, but, um, even though I prefer that you guys have uh, the raw options there, you know, that like pistachios during this time period, it's, they're, they're okay to consume because they're not going to be your primary item that you're consuming. But everything else, like the pumpkin seeds and the sunflower seeds and things like that, these are all other toppings that can potentially go on top of your salad or even just simply having a small bowl of trail mix or nuts that include all of these different seeds. They're going to be packed with potassium, zinc, uh, calcium, um, uh, magnesium, all these things that are going to be beneficial for your overall health, not just your blood pressure. And when you consistently consume these things, this is going to help you on this journey. Now, one thing about nuts is that you don't want to overconsume them because nuts will make you fat. And if you're trying to lose some weight and trying to manage it, be more mindful. Just consume a cup of them and that way you could get a variety of different vitamins and minerals. But you don't want to be the one eating a whole jar or big bag of nuts because they will cause you to gain some weight no matter who you are or what, what, what your activity level is. So just be more mindful if, your, if weight loss is definitely a challenge for you. But having a cup of nuts is a good healthy snack that you can take on the road. Uh, my preferred way to consume them is um, plain, no, not roasted, not salted or nothing else on them. Simply plain, have them mixed up in a variety and just enjoy them as a snack as you are on the go. 
they really come in clutch for me crunch time when I'm traveling and moving out, moving around and about. So um, that was the potassium level uh, version. That was the potassium breakdown inside of the seven day fruit and salad challenge. So what I'm going to do now is if you guys have any questions that are up there, I'm going to review any questions. Uh, and that way I can answer any of your potassium concerns that you may have. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm going to answer any potassium concerns that you may have. And again, I was reading from the, um, seven day fruit and salad challenge. I have both the links. I have the links up here. If you haven't joined the seven day challenge yet, you got the link right up here. It says feature or the one link right there. You can click on it, join the challenge. That way you can get your ebook and have that breakdown for you on hand. And then also just be able to challenge yourself and motivate yourself to start doing things about your blood pressure. Because one thing about it, change happens when you make that choice. And if you don't make that choice to change, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's not, it's not going to occur. So I'm going to take some questions that, that you guys may have. Uh, it doesn't look like I see too many of them, but if you do have any, drop them in the chat. I'll go ahead and answer them for you now. And that way, um, we could just continue to move forward and understand these different type of tactics and strategies to help you get to the, um, the root cause of these blood pressure problems. And one thing we should know is that, you know, when it comes down to blood pressure issues, there's not one, one size doesn't fit for everybody. Everybody, it may not be a nutritional issue. It may not be a, a, a it may not be a stress issue. It, it might be some type of issue or a combination of issues. That's why it's so, so important that you go down and follow a path to be able to look and check everything out to make sure that you're leaving no stone unturned to get to the bottom of it. So for some of us that have these more stubborn, severe blood pressure issues, it's going to take you to flip over more rocks to understand more about your body and what you may be doing wrong. And for some of us, it can be this simple potassium fix and boom, my blood pressure back to normal like we've never seen it before. So understanding that this is a process and the longer you've been dealing with blood pressure issues, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean the longer you have to um, find a problem. The more mean, the, what it means is that you just have to dial in a little bit deeper and understand exactly what your challenges are that you're facing. Because one thing about blood pressure problems for 90, 95 percent of people, this is a, this is based around their dietary choices and their lifestyle. Genetics plays a very, very small role. And if you move through life thinking that just because your mother had it, your dad had it, or your grandmother had it, that you're supposed to have it, you're going to be stuck in a situation where you don't even give yourself a chance to get over the problem. So, um, yeah, so those are the, that's that. Now, I didn't see any questions in here, surprisingly. Usually they pop up after a second, but I didn't see any of them in there. But uh, so since I don't see anything, I guess I'm going to go ahead and wrap these thing, this thing up. But... um. That was the potassium pathway. And now, as we continue to move forward, we're going to be talking about the magnesium, uh, the sodium, the calcium, the zinc, all those little things that comes all together. Because, again, when it comes down to blood pressure, there's a number of nutrients that all play a role. And making the dietary changes to consume those nutrients is going to help you get down this path and get to the root cause of this problem. So with that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you guys from, for checking in. I got the links up here for you guys to join the challenge. If you have any other questions, feel free to write, write it inside of the, uh, the group. I, and I'm going to be hanging out in the group for a little while. I'll answer any questions that you guys have. But uh, I'll see you guys next time when I go live. appreciate you.